It is Monday, the 18th of January, 2021. The news is read by Marano Isaacs. Good morning. The Attorney General's Chambers has filed an application seeking an order to strike out the case in the High Court involving the Haitian migrants who were allegedly ill-treated while in protective custody. This application was filed on the grounds that Attorney at Law Darren Wade lacked authority to institute the proceedings. The proceedings were initially filed by private citizen Al Andres Archer for and on behalf of the 26 Haitians, contending that a breach of their fundamental rights had occurred when they were placed in protective custody at the Hugo Chavez Center for Rehabilitation and Reintegration in Onfawak, Region 5, Mahaika Burbies. Mr. Archer, however, recently came forward claiming that he was unaware that he was the person bringing the action against the Attorney General and he has since withdrawn his name from the proceedings. The Attorney General's chambers in its applications seeking a dismissal of the case submitted to the court that Wade had breached his duty as an attorney at law when he failed to inform Archer of the contents of the document and the consequences of the execution of such documents before he, Archer, had signed it. The AG's chambers further contended that the proceedings were instituted by Mr. Wade, a member of the legal profession, without the authority of the apparent respondent, Archer, which is so fundamental a flaw as to make the proceedings a nullity. Support for Guyana in its border controversy with its western neighbor Venezuela continues to grow with the Bahamas being the latest nation to state that Guyana's sovereignty and territorial integrity must be maintained and preserved. The government of Bahamas in a statement on Friday announced that the island nation has joined with its CARICOM counterparts in standing with Guyana in its ongoing border controversy with Venezuela. Tension related to this controversy increased recently when President of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, issued a decree claiming Guyana, Venezuela's sovereignty and exclusive sovereign rights in the waters and seabed adjacent to Guyana's coast west of the Essequibo River. Based on reports emanating from Venezuela, the decree points to a creation of a strategic zone for national development called the Territory of the Development of the Atlantic Facade, which the Bolivarian Republic envisages will provide adequate protection and safeguard its jurisdiction. However, since Guyana has sovereign rights over the coast west of the Esequibo River, as far as Punta Playa, it follows consequently that only Guyana can enjoy sovereignty and exclusive sovereign rights over the adjacent sea and the seabed. The Caribbean Community CARICOM on January 12th issued a statement expressing deep disappointment and concern over action taken by Venezuela pertaining to its long-term border dispute with Guyana, including intimations of the creation of a strategic area of national development called the Territory for the Development of the Atlantic Facade. Members of the St. Andrew's Parish Church, located at Coven John, East Coast de Marara, were on Sunday morning alerted that their sanctuary was broken into and raided by suspected thieves. Annie Charles, a lay minister of the church, explained that due to the pandemic, the congregation has been meeting virtually and at a sister church in an effort to follow the COVID-19 protocols. Charles told the Guyana Chronicle that a member of the church was on her way to Sunday service at another location when she observed that the back door of the church was open. This was suspicious as no one was scheduled to be there. The member immediately alerted Charles and a few other ministers and after investigating, it was discovered that the church had been burgled. While it is uncertain what time the crime took place, Charles disclosed that the perpetrators had a ball and were, unable to, and were able to escape with several valuables. She said, we came in and this is what we met this time they took the water dispenser, they took the keyboard, they drank out the wine, we have a barrel. They tried to take the television but it's sealed in a grill. Additionally, the woman disclosed that she believes that the perpetrators were in search of money since they ransacked the building and tore apart sections of the altar. 
She also noted that they had a feast as they had opened a few tins of canned food that the church had packed away for donation purposes and ate the contents. They drank the communion wine and left cigarette butts behind the altar. Charles disclosed that this is the fourth time the church has been robbed. The woman stated that the police made little effort to investigate the previous incidents. The latest break-in was reported to the police and senior members of the church are currently in the process of estimating the cost of the stolen items and the damage done by the thieves. And now regional news. British and French overseas territories, Martinique, Montserrat, the Cayman Islands and the Turks and Caicos Islands, TCI, have taken the lead in COVID-19 vaccination, largely due to their status as overseas territories. Earlier in January, Martinique, a department of France, received the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccines for inoculation of the elderly and frontline workers. Martinique, hard hit by COVID-19, is approximately 27 minutes or 50.67 miles on a good ferry ride or fast boat to St. Lucia. Policymakers in St. Lucia coined the backdoor narrative, the scapegoat for COVID-19 surge. Statutory Instrument 2020, number 165A, published in the St. Lucia Government Gazette on Friday, October 30, 2020, said in an effort to prevent, protect against, delay or otherwise control the incidence of transmission of COVID-19, a registered local fisherman shall not enter or leave an area, including a designated landing area, on the Regulation 23 of the Fisheries Regulation, Chapter 715, from the 2nd day of November to the 8th day of November, 2020. Martinique and St. Lucia share a lucrative trade and deep historical ties. In medieval times, St. Lucia was seven times British and seven times French. On this occasion, St. Lucia is left to wonder when COVID-19 vaccines will become available. The British Overseas Territory of Montserrat has announced commencing of its COVID-19 vaccination program, including public education and awareness as to the safety and importance of the vaccination. And now we turn our attention to international news. The United States and several European governments had demanded the release of opposition politician Alexei Navalny from Russian detention. Mr. 40, Navalny, rather, 44, was detained soon after his flight from Germany landed in Moscow on Sunday. He was returning to the country five months after he was almost killed in a nerve agent attack he blamed on the Kremlin. Moscow has denied involvement. Russia's foreign minister dismissed the international condemnation. Sergei Lavrov said Western politicians were using it as a way to divert attention from domestic problems. Russia's prison service on Sunday said the Kremlin critic had violated the terms of his suspended sentence for embezzlement and that he would remain in custody until a court ruling. Mr. Navalny's team said a court hearing was organized on Monday at a police station on the outskirts of Moscow. In a video released by his spokeswoman, Mr. Navalny described the hearing as lawlessness of the highest grade. A group of U.S.-bound Central American migrants have met with truncheons and tear gas in Guatemala, where security forces blocked their path. Thousands of people were intercepted on a road near the border with Honduras on Sunday. The government said it would not accept illegal mass movements. An estimated 7,000 migrants, mostly from Honduras, have entered in recent days, fleeing poverty and violence. They hope to travel to Mexico and then the U.S. border. Every year, tens of thousands of Central American migrants attempt this perilous journey to try and reach the U.S., often on foot, in groups known as caravans. President-elect Joe Biden, a Democrat, has vowed to end the strict immigration policies of his predecessor, Donald Trump, a Republican. But the Biden administration, which will take office on Wednesday, has warned migrants not to make the journey as immigration policies will not change overnight. 
U.S. music producer Phil Spector has died at the age of 81 while serving a prison sentence for murder. Spector, who transformed pop with his wall of sound recordings, worked with The Beatles, The Righteous Brothers, and Ike and Tina Turner. In 2009, he was convicted of the 2003 murder of Hollywood actress Lana Clarkson. His death was confirmed by the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitations. The it said in a statement, the California healthcare facility inmate, Philip Spector, was pronounced deceased of natural causes at 6.35 p.m. On, Sunday, on Saturday, January 16, 2021, at an outside hospital. His official cause of death will be determined by the medical examiner in the San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office, it said. Spectre produced 20 top 40 hits between 1961 and 1965. His production methods influenced major artists including the Beach Boys and Bruce Springsteen. His life was ultimately blighted by drug and alcohol addiction and he all but retired from the music scene during the 1980s and 1990s. In February 2003, actress Lana Clarkson was found dead at his house in Alhambra, California with a bullet wound to her head. Clarkson, who was known for her work in the sword and sorcery genre and starred in films including Barbarian Queen, had met Spectre hours earlier at a nightclub. Spectre claimed the shooting happened when Clarkson kissed the gun, but his trial heard from four women who claimed Spectre had threatened them with guns in the past when they had spurned his advances. Following an, an initial mistrial, Spectre was convicted of second-degree murder and given a sentence of 19 years to life. And now, the world of sport. President of the Guyana Olympic Association, GOA, Kalam Juman Yassim, has written to Charles Ramson, Jr., Minister of Culture, Youth and Sport, on collaboration in the areas of sports development, while also expressing his desire for the laws that govern sports association federations to be respected. Initially, Mr. Yassin chided the minister over a release that was published by the ministry on December 5th when it was stated that their partnership with associations and federations premised on advancing interest of Guyanese sportsmen and sportswomen. The ministry spoke of sanctions being taken on sportsmen and women who acted not in accordance with the laws and constitutions of their respective disciplines, adding that the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport, on behalf of the Government of Guyana, has ultimate responsibility to, among other things, advance sports in Guyana and the interests of Guyanese sportsmen and sportswomen. Mr. Yassin explained that the Guyana Olympic Association is comprised of over 20 national federations and associations and all of these federations and associations are affiliated with their international federations. These international federations, Mr. Yassin pointed out, are all affiliated to the International Olympic Committee, IOC. The IOC is the organizer of the Olympic Games and which games is it a pinnacle for which athletes desire to compete and win medals. The IOC recognizes all of the affiliated international federations as being responsible for their sports worldwide and for them to make all their respective rules with respect to competitions, qualifications to compete at the Olympics and other competitions, disqualifications, constitutions and several other factors. Guyana competes at the Olympics, Commonwealth Games, Pan Am Games, Central American and Caribbean Games, South American Games and the Islamic Games. All of the aforementioned games organizers except the Islamic Games recognize the IOC and are guided by the Olympic Charter. The Olympic Charter is the co codification of the fundamental principles of Olympism, rules and bylaws adopted by the o IOC. According to the GOA president, National federations and associations are guided by their respective constitutions, rules and bylaws, and do not compel clubs or persons to belong or to be affiliated with them. Mr. Yassin said he has seen Minister Ramson's enthusiasm and work during his five months at the ministry, and the GOA is looking forward to forging a concrete partnership with the ministry for the development of sports and young people. The committee and members wish 
and are working to establish a program where athletes can be supported if not fully, then to a great extent, so that their dreams and that of all Guyanese can be realized. England wrapped up a seven-wicket victory over Sri Lanka in the first test of a two-match series in Gaul. Resuming in 38 for three, needing another 36 for victory, Johnny Bairstow and debutant Don Lawrence carried England to their target inside 35 minutes on the final morning of an enthralling encounter. Bairstow ended on beaten in 35 and Lawrence 21. Although the latter survived an LBW review against Dulroan Pereira and Sri Lanka did not refer another shout that replays suggested would have been overturned. After England slipped to 14 for 3 during a frantic de end to day 4, Bairstow and Lawrence's unbroken 62 stand guided them to an ultimately comfortable win. The second starts at 4.30 GMT on Friday at the same ground. England are now unbeaten in nine tests under Joe Root's captaincy. They have won four consecutive overseas tests for the first time since 1957 and boast five successive wins in Sri Lanka. Victory improved England's chances of reaching the inaugural World Test Championship final at Lords in June. They remain, they remain rather fourth in the standings with the two top sides playing in the finals. Players living under strict quarantine rules after arriving for the Australian Open will get no special treatment, says Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews. 72 players are confined to their hotel rooms in Melbourne for 14 days after positive coronavirus test results and flights bound for the event. At least nine infected people, including one player, are in quarantine, officials say. Mr. Andrews said the virus doesn't treat you specially, so neither do we. Some players have complained the harder 14-day quarantine was unnecessary. With the Grand Slam tournament set to start on the 8th of February, players are resorting to hitting balls against the wall and windows of their rooms to stay sharp. Andrew said, I know there's been a bit of chatter from a number of players about the rules. The rules apply to them as they apply to everybody else, and they were all briefed on that before they came, and that was the condition on which they came. So there's no special treatment here. And finally, to end this newscast, this little story. A pigeon that Australia declared a biosecurity risk has received a reprieve from a U.S., or rather after a U.S. bird organization declared its identifying leg band was fake. The band suggested the bird found in a Melbourne backyard on December 26th was a racing pigeon that had left the U.S. state of Oregon 13,000 kilometers or 8,000 miles away two months earlier. On that basis, Australian authorities on Thursday said they considered the bird a disease risk and planned to kill it. But Dion Roberts, sports development manager for the Oklahoma-based American Racing Pigeon Union, said on Friday the band was fake. The band number belongs to a blue bar pigeon in the United States, which is not the bird pictured in Australia, she said. Roberts said the ba bird band in Australia is counterfeit and not traceable. They do not need to kill him. Agri Australia's Agriculture Department, which is responsible for biosecurity, agreed that the pigeon, dubbed Joe after U.S. President-elect Joe Biden, was wearing a fraudulent copy leg band. In a statement it said following an investigation, the department has concluded that Joe the pigeon is a highly likely to be Australian and does not present a biosecurity risk. The department said it will take no further action. Acting Australian Prime Minister Michael McCormack had earlier said there would be no mercy if the pigeon was from the United States. Martin Foley, Health Minister for Victoria, where Joe is living, had called for the federal government to spare the bird, even if it posed a disease risk. Andy Medic, a Victorian lawmaker for the Minor Animal Justice Party, called for a pigeon pardon for Joe. Melbourne resident Kevin Sellybird, who found the emaciated bird in his backyard, was surprised by the change of nationality, but pleased that the bird he named Joe would not be destroyed. Sellybird had contacted the American Racing Pigeon Union to find the bird's owner based on the number on the leg band. The bands have both a number and a symbol, but Sellybird didn't remember the symbol and said he can no longer catch the bird since it has recovered from its initial weakness. The bird with the genuine leg band had disappeared from a 560-kilometer race in Oregon on October 29th, Crooked River Challenge owner Lucas Kramer said. The bird did not have a racing record that would make it valuable enough to steal its identity. 
And that's your newscast this Monday morning, the 18th of January, 2021. With special credits to Guyana Chronicle, Caribbean News Global, and the BBC. For these stories and more, do visit our website at www.realfmgy.com.